Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to easily vacuum stabilize wood using cactus juice. Now for this process you are going to need a vacuum pump. You'll also need a vacuum chamber that will have a gauge on the top and a couple of valves. That chamber should have uh, either a clear chamber or a see-through lid so that you can, you can see what's going on inside of the tank. And then you're also going to use some cactus juice, and this is a stabilizing resin. Seems to be the standard in the industry. Now there's four basic uh, steps to the process. Uh, the very first step uh, is going to be to uh, dry out the wood completely. Uh, while the wood is drying, I'm going to activate the cactus juice. You basically just pour the little bottle into the big one, uh, shake vigorously, and then that cactus juice is activated and can be used for upwards of a year if it's stored at the right temperature. Now, drying the wood is very important. I did mine in a boiler room for uh, a week or so, uh, but other people use dehumidifiers. You want to get it down to as close to zero uh, moisture content as possible. Now I'm going to stabilize a few different items here, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to concentrate on the wood. Stabilizing wood is very important uh, for using it for knife handles or scales, uh, pen blanks, or even uh, turning wood. We're going to basically impregnate that wood with the stabilizing resin, which makes it very hard, uh, very uh, resistant uh, to temperature uh, changes that would cause cracking as well as uh, changes in size. It makes the wood much, much more durable. So I'm going to put it in a container. I'm going to fill that container with the cactus juice uh, over the top of the material that I'm stabilizing. And I'm going to place that into the vacuum chamber. Put the lid on. There's two valves. There's a valve coming from the vacuum pump and another valve going from the chamber uh, to the outside or ambient air. So you want the valve uh, from the pump on and then you will, uh, it doesn't matter if you start with it on or off, but you will end up turning the valve to the ambient air off. And you know you're getting a, a vacuum and see the gauge moving. What will happen here is the vacuum is going to actually suck the air out of the wood and it's going to create a lot of bubbles. Uh, the first initial bubbles are going to be the greatest. Um, and if, if they are approaching spilling over your container, uh, you can always knock these down a little bit just by opening the valve uh, to the outside air, letting a little air back into the, into the vacuum chamber. And usually it's just that first go around that the bubbles get kind of big. You can reclose that valve, continue to run the vacuum pump, and you're going to want to vacuum this material for a decent amount of time. It really depends on the material uh, and how, how thick it is. But for these blanks, um, I ended up vacuuming them for probably close to four to six hours. Basically, you want to continue to keep them submerged in the vacuum tank under vacuum until all or the majority of the bubbles stop. So step one, dry the wood completely. Uh, step two, you're going to vacuum, stabilize in the uh, cactus juice until the, all or most of those bubbles are gone. Uh, then you can turn off the vacuum and you can actually open up that uh, external valve, let air back into the tank. Step three is going to be the soak, and this is just as important as the vacuum stabilizing. You want to let it soak uh, twice as long as how long it took you to get rid of all of the bubbles. Uh, so in most cases, you're really going to let it soak overnight, uh, or for at least a full day. So if I, if I um, had this under vacuum for six hours, at the minimum, I'd like to let it soak for about 12. After it's soaked, I, I take it out and I want to just drain as much of that cactus juice uh, off of the wood as possible. A lot of people will, will wrap these in tin foil before putting them into the oven. Um, I like to just put them on a, on a strainer um, and this way I don't get any accumulation of, of hardening resin uh, that adheres to the bottom of the, of the blank. All of the cactus juice is still good. I can pour all of this juice right back into the original container. Um, and I can, as I said before, I can continue to use that for upwards of a year. Now the next step is going to 
is going to be to harden that stabilizing resin. You do that in an oven, you've got to get it up over 200 degrees, somewhere in the 200 to 250 degree range. In this little oven, that really means that I have to set it close to, to 250, 275. I checked it, I checked it with an external uh, thermometer. Um, and the cook time here, there's no set time, really again is dependent on the thickness of the wood. Um, for thin pieces like this, at least two, uh, two, two and a half hours. Now here's the finished product. Take a look at this. The, the wood on the left is, is not stabilized. The wood on the right is the same type of wood which has been stabilized. It's much harder, it's much heavier, um, and it took a really nice polish very quickly. I just sanded it to 600 grit, put it on the buffing wheel, and that's a, a, a beautiful, hard, stabilized piece of wood. Here's a couple of the pieces that I did. Uh, these I'm going to use um, for my hobby, which is knife making. I'll use these for knife handles. Uh, but this, you know, the same process is used when making uh, fancy pen blanks out of spalted wood uh, or soft wood. Make them nice and hard and durable. And, and really, for whatever you're making, it's just a better uh, finished product. I hope you enjoyed this short little video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, by all means, check us out on the web at DIYEasyCraft.com. And if you'd like to see some of my own creations, uh, check out www.BergKnifeMaking.com. Thank you very much.